Okay, so in the next section, um, we're going to call this section 8.2, not uh, 7. Point, or 5.1. That's where I used to teach. Okay, um, we're just going to find area of uh, rectangles and triangles. And hopefully you remember from years past that the area of a rectangle is base times height. Right, we're trying not to use length and width because right, they're kind of vague. And for a triangle, hopefully you remember that the area is one half base times height. Okay, those are the two formulas we need to know. Okay, so you know um, the other thing to remember: perimeter, right? That's just the distance around the outside. Okay, so as you go and you try this uh, this note packet here. Um, and make sure you, you take a look online because I'm going to tell you guys to, to skip a couple. Um, okay, so um, for, as you do these, and as I was saying, um, make sure you go online and you um, make sure you only do the ones I ask you to do. Right, these ones you can we can do all of these, and so um, you know I'll do one of each type here. All right. Um, so if we're looking at this guy right here, I mean this is as basic as it gets. You have the base right here, right? There's my base and there's my height. Okay, so to get the uh, to get the perimeter, oh wait, this is going to be 10 and that's going to be 8 as well. So you may or may not remember that opposite sides are congruent for these. So perimeter, just add this, 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 and this. So we're adding 10, 8, 10, and 8 together to give ourselves 36 there. Okay. So you should be taking notes on the sheet with me as you do this. You should have this printed out already or be doing a separate sheet of paper. To get the area, remember that's base times height. Sorry for the printer. My wife's printing something. So, And that's just going to be 10 times 8 then. So it's going to be 80. There's no units there, so we don't need to worry about putting units there. But if this had feet and that was feet, I would put this is 36 feet and this is 36 square feet. And that's just needed if, uh, if you have units there. Okay, so B is going to be the same one, so you should try that on your own. Okay, and then we have C right here. All right, for this one, this right angle tells us what, you know, remember that base and height are perpendicular to each other, so we'll put that little note for ourselves. So we need to remember that base and height are perpendicular. Okay, so 10 cannot be a base or height because there's no right angle there. So keep that in mind, right? That's a key thing to remember from years past when you did this, right? Base and height are perpendicular. So I always circle that right angle for myself. So I know that's that looks like the height to me. Okay, so I need this to be my base. Okay, now how do I find the base that's missing, right? So just because you have 10 and 8 given doesn't mean that's the base and height. You have to use the right angle, um, but this one's missing. But hey, it's a right triangle. And I know that the hypotenuse is 10 and the leg is 8. I could do Pythagorean theorem. Or maybe I remember my Pythagorean triple because we did so much with Pythagorean triples to get 6 here. Okay? And if it seems like magic where I got 6 from, then just do the Pythagorean theorem. Just do the 10 squared equals 8 squared plus B squared. And hopefully that will make sense to you that, oh yeah, that's right. That's why. Right? B, that's why that B equals 6. That's my base there. And then I can do for the perimeter, I could add 10, 8, and 6 together. Right. And that would give me 24. And then for the area, it would be 8 times 6 divided by 2. And that's also going to be 24. And this is a weird one where we have the same exact answer for both of those. Okay. If I do, if I do D, right? And if you think you know how to do D, hit the pause button and then check in with me, okay? I'm just, a, I'm just trying to go through this. I know this is all review for you, right? But I want to make sure you can do this. Can't do this unit. We can't do the next unit, okay? So I'll circle that right angle, and I can see that this entire base here is six, right? This whole thing is six, okay? So I have the base, but I am going to need the height. Right? I need to know how tall this is. Okay, so in order to figure out how tall it is, let me grab myself a second color. All right, I'm going to try to look for, uh, you know, I need to find this right here. This is my height. Okay, and if I look at it, hey, look, there's a right triangle over here. 
And so I have 5 as the hypotenuse, 4 as a leg. Oh, this must be 3. This is my 3, 4, 5 triple. Okay, so I just got my height there of 3. Remember, triangles are always divided by 2. When you're doing that, right, I use 6 for the entire base, the base of the entire triangle, times 3, I get 9. Now, some people say, well, could I just do this triangle over here, this area, and could I do this area, and then add them together, and that, that's totally fine. So if I did that, I'd have 4 times 3 is 12 divided by 2 is 6, and then this 2 times 3 is 6 divided by 2 is 3, and you can see that those two together. So you can do it as the one big shape for ourselves or the two smaller shapes. Okay. The perimeter. Okay, we have 5 here, we have 6 here but we have this missing one. We have this extra piece. Okay, So let me grab another color for myself here. I'll grab this highlighter. All right, and I'm going to highlight this triangle right here. See that triangle right there? Okay, There's my right triangle that I have. And my right triangle has a one leg is two and one leg is three. So if I do that out, I'm going to have two squared plus three squared equals my hypotenuse squared. Two, three. Okay, so four plus nine equals c squared. So 13 equals c squared. So c is the square root of 13. What can I combine here? Well, these two are regular numbers, so I can combine those. Can't combine it with a radical. That's a, not a like term. It's like combining apples and oranges. So my perimeter is left as 11 plus root 13. Okay. All right, so those are some of those. We're going to have some examples where they're, they're irregular shapes like this. Okay. And as you do these irregular shapes, the key is to, you know, kind of keep an open mind on how to do it. And, and I'll tell you, there's like five different ways to do this. Right. Um, you know, what, one of the keys for doing this is to um, break up shapes into portions you know how to find the area of. Okay, and that's a key. And sometimes in this breaking up, so if I'm doing this one right here, I, this, I said this one has like five different ways. I could break it up and I could say like, oh, here's a rectangle, and then find the area of each of these rectangles for myself. Okay, Or I could go like this, break it up like this, and here's a rectangle, here's a rectangle, and here's a rectangle, okay? But the method I want to show you, um, and, and they're both valid, I just want to show you this other method, right, as we do this, because I like, this is one of my preferred methods. Sometimes the best way to do it is to think about the entire shape, okay? The entire thing is eight by eight, 64. So it's kind of like if you're going to cut out a pattern for yourself, the pattern here, you'd cut out the square and then you cut this out afterwards. Usually when you cut shapes out, you don't cut the whole, you know, like it's a complicated, you don't cut the whole thing out in one shot. You maybe you cut it out and then cut out another piece in there. So think about that way. So we'll take this, this pattern here, this big square, which is eight by eight. Okay. And then we're going to think about what, what that piece, right? And um, the entire thing minus the missing portions. In this case, there's only one missing portion. It's this rectangle right here, which I'm going to highlight for myself in blue. Okay. We can see this rectangle has a height of 6. How long is this? Well, if this whole thing's 8 and these are each 2, that means this must be 4 because I already have 2 and 2 there. That's 4. And that means there's 4 left over to meet all the way across here. Okay, So that's going to be 4. So this area is going to be 24. So this whole thing is 64. I take away the 24. That means that the area left over is 40. Okay. If I'm going to go and, and do the perimeter now, make sure that you find the, you add up all the sides. Right. You trace the whole thing. So I'll start right here and I'll do that 8. And notice I'll cross it out as I do it. Then I'll do that 8. Then I'll do that 2. Then I'll do this right here. How long? It doesn't have a number on it, but hey, wait. That's 6, so that must be 6 as well. So that there. Right, then I have that 4 that I labeled before, and then I have a 6 that I, right, and then I have a 2, and then I have an 8. Okay. 
Okay, and then you add all those up. And of course, you have a calculator to do this, so feel free to use your calculator. I'm going to show you a little mental math here. Right, two and eight is ten. That's another ten, so that's twenty. Right, there's another ten, so that's thirty. Eight forty-four. So you can do that with your calculator, right? But you could also group these for yourself to make your mental math easier. Okay. Right. So for this section, right? For this section, right? Um, I'm gonna have you guys skip D, okay? And then I want you to try B and C here for yourself, okay? Um, let's go. We'll skip C as well. Just try B for yourself, okay? So, um, right? Try to do that on your own, all right? Um, give it your best shot and then check online with my answers to see how you did, okay? But you should try it first, right, to make sure you can do it, okay? Right, looking at the next page here, okay? Let's see. So the given points represent the vertices of a polygon. Find the area of each polygon, okay? So you just plot it first, all right? Step one, plot points. One, two, three, five, and then right, those are my points. Okay, so this one's a triangle I have here, okay? So, um, all right, step two, what shape is it? Okay. I should say, and... How do I find its area? Okay, we have a triangle, and we know that we're going to find its area by one half base times height. Okay, so now that I know I'm going to find that, that I need the base and height, I just have to look at what's the base and what's the height. How about I call this the base right here? One, two, three, four, five, six spaces. How tall is it? This is not the height. That's slanted. The height is coming straight up and down. How many spaces is it coming straight up and down? One, two, three, four. Okay. It doesn't matter if the height's outside, right? We don't count that space. We just say, hey, the height is four, right? So we're just going to use one half base times height. It's going to be 12, okay? Remember, height doesn't have to be inside the triangle. Height doesn't have to be side length of the triangle. Height just has to be how tall it is, and sometimes how tall it is outside. Remember, remember from earlier this year that we did some examples where our heights were outside. Okay, so for these problems, right, for yourself, right, you're just gonna basically plot the points, think about the shape, and then try your best to find the area.